Hello friends, in today's question, two thin circular discs of mass 2 kg and radius 10 cm each are joined by a rigid massless rod of length 20 cm. The axis of the rod is perpendicular to the planes of the disc through its centers. This object is kept on the truck in such a way that the axis of the object is horizontal and perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the truck. Its friction with the floor of the truck is large enough so that the object can roll on the truck without slipping. Take x axis as the direction of motion of truck and z axis in the vertical upward direction. If the uh, truck has an acceleration of 9 meter per second square, calculate the force of friction of, on each disc and the magnitude and the direction of the frictional torque acting on each disc about the center of mass O of the object, express the torque in the vector form in terms of the unit vectors i, j and k in x, y and z direction. So this is a basic diagram in which we have two discs and a rod is connected in both of the discs and this is placed on a truck and truck is moving in the x direction. So if we see from the side, let us suppose, we can say if this is our truck, something like this, and from the side, this will be our circular disc and the truck is moving let us suppose with the acceleration of a and which is given as 9 meter per second square so because of this there will be a pseudo force that will be acting on the disc in opposite direction so this will be a pseudo force let us call this f pseudo and there, there will be also you can say a frictional force that will be acting in the forward direction fr and this will be our x-axis so it is given that in the upward we have z-axis so this will be our y-axis and mg will be acting in the downward direction and we are going to have a normal in upward direction and it will the disc will have the tendency to roll in this direction because of this the torque which will be produced by the frictional force so let the angular velocity is omega and here we can say the reference frame is stuck it means the person who is observing all this motion is on the sitting itself on the truck so you can say reference frame is struck. So everything that is being observed is with on the person which is sitting on the truck. So let me draw, redraw the figure again. So we have two discs. and this is another one and they are connected through a rod so let us suppose this is a contact point P1 and this is a contact point P2 and the distance between the rod is given as 20 centimeter so let us assume that this is the center of mass of this entire system and we have the axis y will be in this direction and this will be our z 
and this will be our x-axis okay so the force of friction let us suppose fr and here will be fr and the pseudo, uh, pseudo force acting on each disc will be acting in opposite direction that is our ma and here also it will be acting in this direction that is ma and there let us put this point is given as o1 and this is given as o2 and this point is o and the mass is m and here mass is m okay and the center of mass is this point O and let us suppose the acceleration of center of mass is given as ACM. So we can say in the question itself it is given that frictional force FR acts in the direction of the motion of the truck in the direction of motion of truck and the direction of motion of the truck is x-axis so you can say that is along x-axis therefore you can say the pseudo force pseudo force which is our f pseudo acts in the acts in opposite direction acts in opposite direction to the motion of the uh, truck acts in opposite direction of motion of truck and f pseudo will be equal to ma f pseudo will be equal to mass into acceleration <laughs> so next we are going to find out what will be the uh, we can say the equation of the motion for the center of mass so we say if point O is the center of mass and its acceleration is our ACM then for translation motion for translation motion we can write the equation as f pseudo minus the frictional force fr will be equal to mass into acm let us call this as equation number one and it is given that the motion uh, the motion will be only rolling without any slipping so you can say for rolling without slipping tau that is a torque produce will be equal to moment of inertia for disc multiply by angular acceleration which will be equal to your uh, radius multiplied by the frictional force 
where r is the radius of the disk so this is our r r is the radius of the disk and also for pure rolling for pure rolling motion we can write that our center of mass acceleration will be equal to angular acceleration multiplied by radius r so from here we can write alpha that is angular acceleration will be equal to center of mass divided by radius so therefore from this equation let us put this equation in equation number 2 so we can say from equation 2 we get our frictional force fr will be equal to moment of inertia of the disc multiplied by angular relaxation and divided by r okay. and we know that moment of inertia of the disc is equal to half m r square and we also know value of angular acceleration as well as moment of inertia substituting in we get fr will be equal to we have here 1 by r multiply by half m r square and multiply by a c m divided by r so this r cancels out and we get this as half ACM multiply by mass so this is the value of the frictional force and now we are going to use equation number one substitute value of the pseudo force as well as the frictional force and find out what will be the acceleration of the center of mass we can uh, using equation one we get the pseudo force is given as mass into acceleration so we write this as mass into acceleration minus we have frictional force and frictional force let us say this is fr and this will be equal to mass into acceleration into center of mass so from here I can say my acceleration for center of mass is equal to we get this as m and this is equal to m a minus fr which can be written as a minus fr divided by m so we found out our center of mass substituting this center of mass in this equation we get our frictional force so we can say therefore let us suppose this is equation number three so from equation three from equation three we get fr is equal to half multiply by we found out of acceleration that is equal to 1 upon m m a minus f r and this is multiplied by m so this m cancel out with this m and this can be expanded as half m a minus half fr or we can write this as 2 fr is equal to ma minus fr which gives us 3 fr is equal to ma or we can say our fr is equal to 1 by 3 mass into acceleration now we know the mass as well as acceleration Substituting this equation, we can get the value of the frictional force. 
so we have written that our fr is equal to 1 by 3 multiply by mass multiply by acceleration which becomes 1 by 3 mass is about 2 kg acceleration is 9 meter per second square so we cancel this and it comes as equal to 6 newton and the direction of the frictional force is along x-axis so we can say direction of frictional force is along x-axis therefore we write fr is equal to 6i unit vector newtons so this is the value of the frictional force now we come to the b part in which we are supposed to find out sorry, we are supposed to find out the magnitude and direction of the frictional torque acting on each disc about the center of mass o of the object and it is to be written in the form of i j and k In the B part, we have to find out the torque, and we know that torque will be equal to R vector multiplied by frictional force FR. Now, we already let me draw the figure again here. So, this is one disk. and this is second one and they are connected by a rod so this is point p1 point p2 we have friction force fr and here also fr so this is our origin that is center of mass and this is our y axis and z axis and this is our x axis so we are supposed to find out the torque magnitude and direction of the torque acting on disc about the center of mass of the object okay. so let us suppose first of all we find out because of this p1 point and then we are going to find out for the p2 point okay so we can say torque due to fr at p1 point and let us call that as tau p1 which will be equal to let us call that r1 no doubt it will be same all the coordinate will be different so we call this as r1 multiply by the frictional fr and for r1 this is our point o we have y axis this is our z axis and this is our x axis and we have the center of the rod is here so distance of the origin to the center of rod this distance is our point one and the distance from the you can say the point p1 so the point p1 is somewhere here and this distance is also point one so we can say that our r1 vector will be equal to or we can say yeah r1 uh, let it let it be rp1 rather rp1 sorry so we can say our, our rp1 vector will be equal to minus 0.1 j and this will be minus 0.1 k okay because y is in this direction 
and for p1 we are moving in the opposite direction this is this distance is point 1 and this is our z axis so not y and we are moving the opposite side of the z axis we are going to get this and fr we already know is 6 i so substituting the value we get this is minus 0 0.1 j minus 0 0.1 k and multiply by 6 i so we get tau p1 will be equal to 0 0.6 can be taken as common and this will be k minus j okay so this will be our the torque which will be acting at point p1 similarly we can find out for point p2 <coughs> we can say torque due to fr at p2 point okay. so once again let us draw the basic so this is our origin and we have y in this direction this is our z and we have x in this direction and point p2 is somewhere here okay. so the distance of the origin for the point uh, p2 is point 1 and this distance is also point 1 so therefore we can say that torque p2 will be equal to r p2 multiplied by fr and we can find out that our r p2 will be equal to this will be now plus 0.1 j minus 0.1 k okay because this is our y so moving in the positive direction and opposite to the z direction and value of friction we already know is 6 i so substituting the value we get this as 0 0.1 j minus 0 0.1 k and multiply by 0 0.6 i so we get tau p2 will be equal to 0 0.6 and this comes as minus j and minus k so this is the torque vector in terms of unit vector x y and z sorry i vector j vector and k vector terms and we can find out the magnitude also the magnitude will be same so we can say tau p1 will be equal to tau p2 and this will be equal to 0.6 square root of 1 and 1 and this comes as equal to 0 0.6 square root of 2 newton meters so in case the magnitude is required so this completes the question. Thank you.